Hello, and welcome to episode 95 of Bardic Quest. Alone within the deep tunnels of the lost mine of Fandelva, Thoric and Johan venture deeper and deeper. Now aware that this ancient mine might be more inhabited than they originally thought, can they evade the monstrous creatures within? So without further ado, let's get into this week's episode of Bardic Quest. You, uh, last time dealt with the, uh, the yellowy ooze that was, um, and, uh, after defeating it, in fairly swift fashion, I think, um, you then began to, uh, rummage around in the, in the pool of water that was in that cave, uh, where you found some wonderful goodies, uh, which I don't think you've yet identified. One was a wand. Yes. I don't think you've identified any of them, though, right? No. I no. didn't think so. Um, just so I don't accidentally let slip what they are. Uh, uh, so, um, after gathering up these wonderful goodies, you then uh, left that chamber going up the stairs into uh, a further tunnel uh, wherein you were going to explore the further depths of... Wayback Cave. So, at the moment, you are deep in these tunnels, winding, intersecting, uh, much like the tunnels that you had been venturing through before. Just a maze of uh, half excavated tunnels, dead ends, and just like this underground labyrinth of tunnel um so with that in mind could i please get a survival check from both of you please to see how well you navigate these tunnels merely by existing <laughs> to take a survival check <laughs> <laughs> indeed <laughs> oh god See, that was a natural 20, but I feel like I've wasted it. <laughs> like, even though it was totally by chance, I, mean, I really could have done with that later on. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe. That's good that uh, he got a nat 20 because I got a nat 1. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, it's a good job that you're following close by uh, behind Johan. As he guides you. I'm sure it's this way. <laughs> <laughs> um, however, um, Thoric is the one with the dark vision. I presume you have a, a torch at this point. Yeah. Uh, one I think. I've illuminated the. Oh, yes, you have. That's shield. Right. That's right. Which I'll wait for when it finishes and then continue to. Lovely. Um, so, you follow these tunnels around uh, using whatever various uh, tips and tricks you have learnt over the years by venturing into the dark places of the world, Johan. And eventually, you come to a sort of a, a crossroad, kind of. Um, you come across a door. Um about five foot wide uh, stone door. Um, now this door itself is um, six foot tall, four foot wide, um, with like iron handles and hinges upon them. Um, but um, the structure of it, you can see certainly uh, Thoric 
definitely falls into the category of dwarven designed. So there's that door in front of you, and to your right, you can actually see a further tunnel um, leading probably about 30 or 40 feet, um, which extends out to another crossroad where you've got the options to head uh, either left or right. So your choice essentially is go back the way you came, go through the door, or take the tunnel to your right. Um, the door. Can I learn what's it made of? The door itself. Stone. Okay. Uh, with my stone cunning, uh, do I get any sort of impression? Uh based on the door, I guess. Uh, I'm, what I'm trying to discern is what might be behind it. Is the door ornate? Uh, d is it reinforced as if something might be like kept in or out of it? Um, or like as a method of protection to store something? Is it ornate that might give me the clue that it might lead to some sort of, I don't know, um, chamber used for meetings? Th that's where his head's going. Like, can I learn anything about the door? Sure. Um, do you want to give me a history check with advantage? Sure. Because I think your stone kind of gives you advantage, right? Yes. Mm. Uh, Fifteen. Fifteen. Um, so you take a while to inspect this this door, looking for any carvings or anything. It's a it's an old door, as you would. No, because this is an old mining complex. Um, almost conspicuous by their absence, I suppose, there is no significant markings of any kind on this door at all. Mm -hmm. It is purely functional at this point. It doesn't necessarily represent anything behind it, which at least, again, because of such absence of any markings would certainly imply that whatever is behind it is perhaps perhaps less significant than significant, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I'll pass that on to Johan. Um, and uh, say we can always come back this way. Um, I'm happy to go through here if you are, but we always take a peek. If we can open it, we should look. Okay. But then... We should be discreet. Which we don't want to uh, awaken anything else to chase us down one of these tunnels. Hmm. Um, in which case... Uh, can we extinguish the lights for a moment? <laughs> I'm All sure right. the audience missed that because you did it so quietly <laughs> I, I, th I think they did would you like to describe what you did Johan <laughs> Johan licks his hand and extinguishes his torch trying to hide how really really hurts <laughs> I'm just gonna mm. you can see the steam um, coming off his yeah. hand look <laughs> even just that, without even thinking, he just bandages his hand for him. Just <laughs> <laughs> um, Thoric will extinguish light on his shield, okay. uh, relying on his dark vision. Uh, Which I'd leaves like to... you, Johan, now completely in darkness. You can't see a damned thing. I keep my hand on Johan's shoulder, um, and I will immediately cast light on uh, my shield again, if anything starts to <laughs> so you're you're not you're not casting it now you're just kind no. of getting ready to cast preparing, it should you preparing need preparing to. to if if i hear anything scrabbling it can be the conditions <laughs> <laughs> of it okay if anything starts to sprint towards me so um, for all intents and purposes i'm blind correct you are actually uh, mechanically speaking 
uh, now under the blinded condition because you are completely in darkness, cool. uh, which would mean that you would automatically fail any ability checks that require sight and uh, attack rolls against you would have advantage and your attacks would have disadvantage. Okay. Lead on, Macduff. That went well, didn't it? Um, <laughs> and then I will very carefully try the door. Okay. And literally, like, peek around it to see what I can see. Bearing in mind this is a stone door. Hmm. Um, I am going to need a stealth check from you. I'll take which it. Which is going to be quite high because this is a stone door. Uh, which may grind across the floor. Dwarven made though, it's on perfectly balanced hinges because dwarven. It's also made. very old though. No, it's not. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna use that excuse every time. Dwarven made. <laughs> that is I dropped my dice. That's a twenty one. Oh uh, nice. Okay. A twelve a twelve for Thoris, which given the circumstances not too bad. <laughs> okay. Um all right. So, you push the door as gently as you can, bracing yourself, hoping that it doesn't scrape against the the walls and the ground. But as you quite rightly said, this is a dwarven-made door, and even despite its age, um, opens pretty silently as you have a peek inside. See. What do I see, Wayne? In this chamber, which is about uh, 30 foot by 50 foot, 30 foot deep as you look into it, and 50 foot wide, um, partly to your left, partly to your right, um, with a little nook uh, to your left at the far end. Um, it's a certainly a uh, for want of a better phrase, man-made chamber. Um, it features various old stone bunks all in orderly rows lining the walls. Um, and you can see in the centre of the room a corroded iron brazier full of old coals standing near the middle of the room. You can also see, which features quite prominently in this chamber um, bones of about half a dozen creatures uh, strewn about uh, clad in scraps of armour and over these creatures you can see three grey hunched figures squatting amongst the remains uh, pouring at the scraps and gnawing oh. upon the bones. Oh. <laughs> Please, for the audience, describe. <laughs> Thoric uh, nopes out of the room. Just. <laughs> he peeks his head in, and then he goes... <laughs> <laughs> and closes the door again. <laughs> <laughs> so I I just lay a He can't a, see a you. No, I know I lay a finger over his <laughs> lips. Oh his lips, okay. <laughs> um and uh cast um light on one of my rings which I just hold in my palm so it doesn't create too bright a light. Um and then I just let some of I let some of the light peek out so he can see my face. Uh, so I'm just sort of uplit by a, a small beam of light, and I just go... And <laughs> just indicate to him to, that we're we're not going to go in that room. Yeah, and just like, looks at the door and he goes... Three. There, he he mimes... <laughs> Johan yeah, just looks at his daggers and goes... Uh, Oh, 
Lots Maybe. of commando gesturing. <laughs> going you, on. What's Johan pointing towards? The direction that you pointed towards. So, yeah, so we're, we're going to go up the tunnel. Yeah, and, tunnel. Um, <laughs> is there any, like... So what have we got in our packs? Um, uh, what you looking for? Uh, just something to mark the door with. Um, uh, oh, you've got your newly extinguished torch, haven't you? Yes. I'll borrow that and just using the ash from the top, draw an X on the door. Dead inside. <laughs> yeah. And nice. we'll... Into the direction. <laughs> Away from the beasties. <laughs> ah, I... No, no. No, no. <laughs> okay, so. Which... Is a proper rogue? <laughs> <laughs> a proper rogue. Proper um, which, uh, which of the. Because we're at a fork, aren't we? You are, yes. As you follow that tunnel down, it brings you. Um, to a, a, a fork in the tunnel, which you can see a little bit clearer now. Um, you have the option to go left or right. Um, but from where you are, you do also, you can see uh, that essentially there are a number of tunnels that branch off from this fork in the road. So if you go left, um, you can see that there you'll come to um, another crossroad, which will be left or right again. Um, and... Um, the tunnel does continue further, though, um, but it's beyond the extent of your torchlight from the junction that you're at. Um, but also you can see that if you go right, um, that the the tunnel headed right does end in a half excavated uh, tunnel, but equally has an additional turn to what would be the left. Should we flip a coin? Uh, your choice. Uh, just kind of go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. <laughs> sort of a uh, an edge lord, <laughs> brethren, <laughs> brethren vigilant version of eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Like catch a wizard by his tail. If you burn him, do it again. <laughs> <laughs> And this goes left. I like left. Mm. I'm left handed, so it feels good. So, mm. you take the left hand turn, which uh, again leads to this crossroads where you'll have the left or the right choice or to continue straight ahead. Um, about 20 feet down this tunnel, you make. You make out this this crossroad. Again, the right-hand turn or a left-hand turn, which you can see uh, another stone door um, that way. Or, again, the tunnel continuing beyond into the darkness. What's the extension, uh, the, the range of the light given off by the light spell? I think you are muted, Isaac. Sorry, That's rookie right. error. Uh, I just have it. I have it here. Uh, twenty foot uh, bright, twenty foot dim. So forty total. Same as a torch. Okay, so you can just make out then with this uh, this light spell that the tunnel continuing further ahead. Um, in this underground labyrinth that you have discovered this place to be. Um, the tunnel that continues onwards does have a left turning further down. So essentially your choice now is to take the door to the left, the tunnel to the right, or the tunnel straight on, which might lead to a left-hand turn later or another choice. Johan, um, despite what was lurking behind the door number one um, angles his head towards this current door. I nod. Um, I take a... I just sort of like point and see, 
we should mark where we've been before. He takes his uh, his torch and I was thinking about something clever, but yeah, just puts another another cross in soot or ash or mm-hmm. yeah. So we'll be taking the left hand turn to a door. Mm. Okay. So you uh, approach the door again. A um, rather plain-looking stone door sits before you. Clearly, once again, Thoric of Dwarven make. Do you need another stealth check when it comes to opening? Well, I think the way we'll do this is whomever is going to open the door can take a stealth check with advantage for an assist from the other. I think that should be your department. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) I'll um I'll take the actually no I'll just do it on something that uh is your hand carrying his um torch? Mm. Um, I could extinguish the torch. Do you want something smaller that you can conceal in your hand? Um I'll take a I'll take the ring off and give it to Johan. Stop it. Um uh so he can do the the trick where he can extinct cover it basically to choose how much light he's revealing. Okay. It is purely out of necessity that he's agreeing to do this. <laughs> Unless you want to hold on to your torch again. It's like imagine like a child holding a turd. <laughs> it's not gonna in, hurt in, you. in a clenched hand. <laughs> Stop being silly. It's not gonna hurt you. Come on. It's just like you're being silly. Come on. Come on, be a big boy. In you go. <sighs> so he's just kind of Okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. I'm just just, just gonna just gonna draw with it, just gonna get it over with. But we're all on my stealth check. Oh bloody hell. It's twenty-two. Oh. Again, the dwarves showing their fantastic craftsmanship indoors that uh, last so long even in well I mean especially I suppose in an underground territory that is their area of expertise this door once again opens silently you are holding the ring currently Johan to have a look in are you shedding light into the room um, I sort of peek to see if I can see anything with the naked eye first. And I presume I can't. You're going to automatically fail a check uh, reliant on sight uh, if you are not okay. presenting the light. So I slowly kind of move my hand. The question is, ultimately, is whether or not you want to look in or whether or not you want Thoric to look in. Okay, tell you what. I will look in, and if I can't see anything, which it turns out I can't, I then um, gesture to Thoric and ask him if he can. Please, would you kindly, would you kindly look through the door? <laughs> and I obey. <laughs> uh, uh, I peek my head round, and what do I see? What do my dwarf eyes see, Wayne? This room looks very familiar to you because only a few minutes ago you looked into this same room with these hunched creatures uh, over these bones um, gnawing at them um, seemingly enjoying themselves as much as they can as luck would have it due to the fantastically well-manufactured doors uh, leading into this chamber. These creatures are currently not aware of your presence. Oh. <laughs> kind of, do, do you feel like we're being shepherded? <laughs> I know. You do exactly the same thing. I just go... Shut the door again. <laughs> 
I love imagining from this from their from their perspective where one door opens and then it closes. <laughs> and then the door opens and then it closes. <laughs> and then they just skitter off again. Okay then, so where do we go from here? Um, I'm feeling this way. Let's see what I did there. Um, uh, and I just point to the door again and go. <laughs> Same, bro. Well, Rohan's like. Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Um, the uh, the left hand tunnel with the turn, or st- wait, was it straight on? <laughs> so we can go straight on till midnight. Mm. I think I should go straight on, based on. <laughs> Why do I have a feeling that this is going to lead to another door? <laughs> How day I resent that. <laughs> okay then. Plunge on needlessly ahead, then. All right. Plunge. So, just to be clear, uh, you are... You've had the door that was to your left. Mm. You're going to continue straight on for the potential left turn later. Yep. All right. So, you continue onward, then. Uh, The... Crossroad that you've seen, um, it's almost more of a T junction than a crossroad. Uh, but as you approach it, you can see that the tunnel ahead, directly ahead as it continues, um, ends at a partially excavated wall once again. Um, but the tunnel to the left continues downwards, um, far beyond the extent of your light from the ring. And you can see a not a door, but an entryway, uh, about ten foot wide, to another chamber to the right. Um, I kind of pull Gladys out of my belt and kind of, sort of, and you know, I gesture to the right that I'm making my way towards the door, kind of crouch down a little and kind of make my way towards this entrance and see if I can perch myself in such a way that I can peek inside. Are you uh, shedding light on the situation? Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for, for my compadre to take his, his position and tell me what is Dwyer affair to see. I'll essentially... Um... probably next to him sort of um because he's taller and leaner than i am i'll probably like scoot up to the side of him and use my shield as kind of like a shield for both of us and then peek around that to see if i see anything around the corner okay this room um is about 30 foot wide by 30 foot um practically square except for the fact that the the far wall of this chamber <coughs> excuse me of this chamber uh, has collapsed into a mass of rubble um you can see however in the chamber on the left hand side as you're looking in you can see a door to the north that stands somewhat ajar leading to a fairly good sized uh storeroom from what you can see you can just make out um, some dusty kegs on the far side of the door what would you like to do door room might be worth a look you're in kind of nods and kind of kind of takes the ring out, out of his hand, puts it in the other hand, kind of wipes off the sweat and then puts it back and then kind of 
readies Gladys and just kind of okay, just goes like <sighs> takes deep breath and slowly, cautiously approaches and makes his way into the chamber. Thorak will uh, follow. Okay. So you head into this additional chamber and you can see um, that these dusty kegs are just tucked neatly against all of the walls. Um, but every single one of them seems to have uh, split open and cracked uh, due to the age or presumed age of them. Um, again, this chamber that these kegs are in is about 30 foot by 30 foot. There are no other entryways in or out of this room. Uh, with the light from my clutched ring, can I see the full extent of the room? Or is that door ajar still kind of... Oh, forgive me. I thought you were... Um... You were at the ajar door. I oh, was the, the the ajar door, the, en the entrance to this chamber. So there was the there was the entrance into this chamber, which was the kind of partially collapsed chamber, and then the door to the left, which yeah. was slightly ajar, which is why oh, I okay, thought, fair. which I thought you meant you'd gone. Was that right? Yeah. No, that's oh. right. Oh, okay, good. I got confused. That's my fault. Right. Um. So yeah. So so other other than the way you've come into either of these chambers, there is no additional way out. We, uh, well, Thoric's gonna go feeling a bit bolder and that he doesn't think this is gonna be too much of a problem. He thinks it probably is just a store and he's gonna walk forward a bit more confidently and head into this little storeroom and uh, have a little poke around, see what he can find. Okay, do you wanna give me an investigation check? Sure. Um, is Johan coming with me? Can I? Hell yeah. All right, I, go uh, go with advantage then. For could, a, could I give back? Could I give Johan investigation? <laughs> the advantage <laughs> is his like, area of expertise. Once I again, I feel like that. Yeah, he's he's good at spelunking. I'm I'm holding the door. I kind of say to him like, "It's going to be okay. I'll I'll watch your back. You have a poke around." <laughs> cool. Uh, I'll plant plus myself six in the to investigation. <laughs> yeah, mine's yeah, mine's zero. So, <laughs> right. So. Uh, not that it helped much. That's an eight. Hmm. With uh, well that, with, was that with advantage? Oh, excuse me. That's a 25. Oh, much better. Um, so, you uh, kind of rummage around in this room looking at all of the, the kegs and things, the contents of which seem to have uh, long evaporated. Um, as you might expect, given the age of this mine. Um, there's no food left at all in this, what seems to be a storeroom. Um, but there are many of the barrels have labels upon them which say Fandolin Cider. Um, and you do find, actually, a book sat on top of one of the barrels. I uh, yeah, pick it up and give it to Thoric. Uh, you could probably read better in this light than I can. What uh, language is it in? Uh, it is in common. Um, and it looks to be, actually, a recipe book. Oh. Um, and it looks as though it was a, like a compilation of recipes written by many different individuals. Um, each of them contributing a wide variety of recipes um, from dwarven, gnomish, and human culture. And uh, one of the recipes actually is for a shepherd's pie that seems awfully close, based on your own experience, to many of the shepherd's pie served in lots of the, ta the taverns in the local region. And as you're just uh, flicking through this recipe book, you do also find a note written and inside the book. Mm -hmm. uh, which is not in relation to recipes per se, but does make note 
of various poisonous fungal spores that can be found within areas of the mines um, with clear instructions uh, to minimize any exposure of any food to these various poisonous spores. Very good to know. Does it specify where these spores are? It does not. Okay. Uh, I pass this information on to Johan and say, keep an eye out for anything, uh, any spores or fungal looking things that might uh, grow in these deep caves. Johan takes it and pops it in his uh, poisoner's kit. Nice. Is there anything else you would like to do? (laughs) (laughs) You use your your cinnamon, at least. Yes. Cinnamon. (laughs) Um, So, the the barrels of cider. Hmm. It would be a very old vintage by now. Again, Um, the contents of these kegs have, from the investigation, have evaporated. There's there's nothing. There's nothing left of any any beverage of any kind. That would be, that would be, you know, there's aged cider and then there's, you know, a couple of hundred years. Ancient cider. Geriatric (laughs) cider. (laughs) That'll put hairs on your chest. Um, Cool. Uh, Brilliant. We have attained everything that I wanted from this cave. Uh, So, yeah. Uh, Holy Grail, Dr. Jones. (laughs) You have chosen wisely. (laughs) <laughs> um, uh, oh, oh, oh. Okie dokie, Dr. Johan. Um, let's uh, let's carry on, shall we? I will refrain from calling you short round. <laughs> <laughs> Thoric's smile fades from his face and just goes, Why would you call me short round? And Thoric, um, Johan's like, because of the, the the story of I'm just messing with you, don't worry. It's fine. And your hands like you oh. <laughs> 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 um, All right. Your hands like uh, it's very funny. Mm, mm. He's an acquired taste. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you leave the uh this chamber, this storeroom. And you're going to continue down the tunnels, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So we'd be going right out of here. Out of here. Yeah. Okay. And continuing down this this tunnel in the direction well, that let's you were. Let's do it. Originally <laughs> headed. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you turn right out of the room, and you continue for about only about 10 or 20 feet before you see on the edge of your dark vision and the edge of your light, uh, Johan. Uh, Presuming, of course, you are utilizing the light at the moment. Um, You do see that the chamber, uh, the, the tunnel, sorry, does widen out into a larger chamber about 30 feet ahead of you. Could I get a stealth check from you, please? Yes. Oh, dear. Not gone so well, I'm afraid. That's a nine. I got a 13 with disadvantage. <laughs> okay. So not that I'm smug or anything. Just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, true. <laughs> so this tunnel is breaking out into this uh, or widening out into this larger cavern you're still in the tunnel at the moment what would you like to do well what are the consequences of my presumably failed stealth check who knows uh, yeah. I think Given it's a larger room, uh, Thoric will uh, take the ring back and, um, with a tinderbox, light uh, Johan's uh, torch again. So, cool. I mean, with a tinderbox. Yeah. Was that? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Johan's sure. glad to be back in the presence of natural light again. 
Yeah. What he considers to be natural light, anyway. <laughs> and just we've both got a source, and then he'll put his ring back on and then cast light on his shield. Uh, so it's outward facing and uh, a bit more useful. Like at this at this point, you know, we're we're on borrowed time until something finds us again. So. So you're going to cast cast lights on your shield, yeah? Yeah. Um, just to get a better sense of the room, because he doesn't like the dark corners and not being able to see what's happening. Um, and okay. Thor's just going to listen out to see if he can hear anything or see anything within sure. his shield. Sure. Can I get a perception check from you, please? Yes. Uh, dirty 20. Woo! Oh, sorry, 18. 18. Sorry, wrong, I was looking at the wrong score. You can hear from the tunnel beyond a little bit of shuffling, a little bit of groaning. But it's quiet and muted. So where, in relation to where we are, where is the noise coming from? The larger cavern ahead. Okay. Um, I pull your hand to me and I say, there's something up ahead. I think we need to make some progress if we're going to find Gundren's brother. I think we might have to face whatever it is and just make the most of it. At last, I'm tired of all this sneaking around. <laughs> Feels weird for a rogue to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Thoris is going to say, wherever we are, just stay close. We'll gang up on them and take them out one by one. Your hand's like gives Gladys a little flip. <clears throat> I thought it was quite impressive. Though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you're going to venture into this uh, this chamber, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So you proceed forward with your torchlight and the light from Thoric's shield. You enter into a large cave. Cavern is probably more appropriate, which to your left extends well beyond your light into the darkness beyond. The, in fact, stood at the mouth of this tunnel, you can't even see the far end of the room either, directly in front of you. Good. You can see, to your right, um, a steep ledge, almost, um, or a steep incline that leads to a ledge uh, high above you. Uh, with you can just make out some stairs leading up to this ledge, just on the edge of your uh, your light, um, carved out of the stone. And you can see, almost directly in front of you, slightly to your left, uh, two large tables in this lower section that you find yourself stood in along with a, a pair of old braziers. Um, there are skeletal remains scattered all across this chamber. Can I get a nature check from you both, please? Good thing, boss. Really, you can. That's uh, 14. 15 for Thoric. Okay. A Thoric. Eh, probably you as well, actually, Johan, if I'm honest. Um, you can make out the skeletal remains of a mixture of dwarves, gnomes, orcs. And some much larger creatures, which you suspect might be perhaps ogres, dotted across the ground. 
which all attests to if the legends are correct the fierceness of the fighting which must have taken place here uh, a long time ago but also to your right from atop the ledge you hear the groans and moans of four of these familiar grey hunched creatures uh, atop the ledge um, they look as though they are or were perhaps once human but hunger seems to have replaced any humanity their withered bodies composed of little more than very bruised skin stretched over sinew and bone um, filth and gore staining their claws and uh, faces their eyes black as pitch which are weeping like a tarry substance with a long black tongue that's slithering from its th fanged mouth johan you've seen these creatures before certainly um the ones that attacked you and sergey in the night and nearly finished you off and there are four of them on these ledges looking at you both with a significant hunger Let's roll some initiative. No. <laughs> so that's it for another exciting episode of Bardic Quest. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Before we go, I just wanted to take a quick moment to say thank you to a couple of folks. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to James Webster for providing us with and allowing us to use this beautiful animated artwork that features throughout the show. If you are a fan of his work and want to show your support to him, then head on over to patreon.com forward slash jamesrpgart where you can become a patron of his. But also I'd like to say a big thank you to our friends over at Sirenscape for allowing us to use their wonderful ambience, music and sound effects. So if you'd like to introduce those sounds to your table, head on over to sirenscape.com to check out their amazing work. So that's it from us this week and we will catch you next time.